As regular viewers will know, checking the airspace before you fly your drone is an essential step to ensure that your flight is both safe and legal. For many years, the go-to app in terms of accurate information, which was updated live, was the Drone Assist app from Altitude Angel. Sadly, the company has entered administration and the reliability and long-term availability of the Drone Assist app is far from certain. Well, it appears that to help fill this void, someone has stepped forward to assist UK drone users. A shiny new service called the Drone Map, quite aptly really, has been launched by the awesome people over at FPV UK, the Drone Association. They offer a range of benefits and perks to members, including public liability insurance with international cover, access to their awesome Article 16 authorization, and so much more. The founder, Simon Dale, is someone who works tirelessly to support drone users of every level, including engagement with the airspace regulator, police, and government. You can find a link to their site below. I'm personally a member, and FPV UK are a channel partner. Both of these things happen because I believe in the association wholeheartedly. That belief has borne fruit once again with this new addition to the airspace apps, the drone map. What makes it this such a great product, why I'm so excited about it that I wanted to make a video, is the fact that it is free to use and they do not even want your data as you're not required to sign in, etc., to get all of the information you need. It's completely free and open to access. The best way to access the map for the first time is to head to a browser, open a browser, and head over to the dronemap.com. You'll then be offered the option to download the relevant app for your device. There is a desktop and mobile app. Let's take a look at the map itself and look at the ease of use and features, shall we? So it looks fairly familiar, doesn't it? It does have that look and feel of uh, the uh, drone assist of, of the air map that we're used to. Um, one of the things I have to say is that, it, it you know, looking here, as you can see, this is all sort of you know, live, as it were. I've, I'm using the app on a separate window on my Windows desktop here. And it does zoom very nicely, very smoothly, and um, loads very, very quickly, I have to say. I've tested this out in the field as well on just a cellular um, uh, device with, with just a cellular um, network without Wi-Fi, and it's just as quick, just as smooth. Um, I was really, really impressed by it. However, they're ensuring that the loading is nice and light, etc., resource-wise. It's really, really good. In terms of on the screen here, you've got the simple logo on the top right. You've got the terms and conditions at the bottom, which is something you tick as you come in. That's a really important one, actually. It's a really good message when you first come in because it does remind you that this is information for you as a drone pilot to use to assess whether or not your flight is safe. It's not here to make the decision for you, basically, which is something we always said about drone assist, but it's good to see it actually in the terms and conditions as you come in. Uh, there's also the about section there and you can go along and support FPV UK directly from in here and also go across to Drone Hub, uh, which is their um, community hub, basically. OK, so back to the map and on the bottom left here, you have the update time. So essentially, basically telling you when the airspace data is valid. So if you are about to fly or anything else like that, you can check that, make sure that everything's OK. In terms of where it is now, this says 10 my clock here says 10 14 so obviously i'd be able to reload it to check if anything has changed basically there's also these little uh, plus and minus here for you to jump in and out but it's a very smooth um, zoom in terms of the middle uh, button on your on your windows mouse and also in terms of touch um, and pinching etc to zoom in and out as well okay there's quite a few layers here which is good to see and they've been well thought out and presented very much focused on drone flying for sure. Um, here you've obviously got your airfields, the disabled airfields, uh, airports, of course, military aerodromes, air sport sites, uh, London helicopter routes, uh, hazards, which of course is important, no TAMs, actual flight restriction zones, the ATZs, so the aerodrome traffic zone, the CTR central zone, both of those are unticked as they're not required in terms of um, open category drone flight uh, to have to um, be um, controlled by those. That's basically for manned aviation talking to a local aerodrome that they're flying away from or towards or in the area of at certain heights. You then have the military ATZ here, which is a further zone outside of the um, FRZ around a military um, uh, aerodrome, etc. Th this was basically recommended to be shown on maps uh, by um, one of the safety uh, organizations. You don't have to have permission to fly in, an, in, a, in a MATS, an MATZ. 
um, but it is something which um, is useful to know and for you to be able to keep an eye out etc heightens your awareness if you're flying in the area and of course AIP supplements so TRA CTA so you get your temporary zones and that type of thing as well the color coding is all very much something that we will be used to as uh, uh, drone assist users um, you have your obviously your red aerodrome London underground sign shaped bits here you've also got specific um, areas here which are things like temporary danger areas which are installed also you have things like the upcoming restrictions so you've got this one here in blue which is a restricted area for a NOTAM and it's showing it's actually a flight restriction really similar wording in terms of it's a cleaner version it's also a, a version which has been created um, much more recently than drone assist uh, but it does give you all of the information you need to know and again as you know from previous Geekvana um, airspace explainers it does have that under article 239 bit in there which does tell you it's an actual flight restriction and that will stay blue until this is live and then it will convert across it into red to let you know that it is actually live which is why again it's important to refresh the app and check it again before you actually fly to see if anything has become active that you haven't remembered or haven't thought of etc but as I was saying you can really can just zip around this and get all the danger areas get all the FRZs etc very very quickly it does of course have all of the prisons etc um, in terms of where it's getting its information from it's directly from official sources rather than intermediaries so I think that's a really good idea there what I've also found as well is that from opening the app I mean it's it's essentially an app wrapper the way that this is seems to be working uh, bringing the website within uh, an easy to open app on your phone or or um, desktop um, and it, it's very quick loading you're able to get because you don't have to sign in it's not paid for etc you're able to get in get the information you need and get back out basically in terms of my overall thoughts on this as a first version of the map and app I'm frankly a little blown away by both the functionality but also the fact that it is free and you do not need to sign in this really is an excellent service and one that Geeksvana highly recommends do consider signing up as an FPV UK member. It does support work like this new Airspace app and the other amazing work that Simon Dale does on behalf of the drone community. Any questions, any features that you'd like to see, let me know in the comments. Sean out.